Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Anna. We're two sisters who love handcrafting and figuring things out. everybody today is june 22nd it's wednesday and we're filming from nice hot and sunny northern well, actually kind of a little bit cloudy um northern california so thank you so much it's great to see everybody i'm so glad you're back and i just want to thank um really we both want to thank everybody again for all your comments whether it's here on youtube or on instagram it's really fabulous we sort of start feel like we're starting to get to know you and and you're stitching um likes and dislikes so we're really really enjoying it just as a reminder, if you go down in the description box um, below, there's going to be a link to our show notes where everything is. And I'm also going to, um, my, our niece recommended, she says she thinks there's something in YouTube like chapters or a way that you can go to our different segments. So I'm going to play around with that. And if nothing else, I'm going to put down in the bottom to like it, what time each segment goes to. So if you want to zip ahead to something, um, you can do that. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, we'll give it a go. Yeah. In the last video, I had put out a wondering about feeling like lighter threads didn't lay as mm -hmm. flat and as smoothly. And some commenters gave us some good ideas to try, some of which I've tried, and I wanted to, um, to, to share some of those in case it's helpful to anybody else. So Lynette Peters said that, there's, that white um, is bleached before it is dyed, or some fibers are bleached before it's dyed, oh. um, and that that can just change the feel of the fiber. Um, so almost having to remove some color out of it to really make it a white, white. Right. Yeah. It reminds me of middle schoolers who, when they dye their hair a color, like magenta or something, oh, they, they bleach, bleach it first, first mm -hmm. and then, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, Vicki in Kansas, she thinks anchor threads lie flatter than oh. DMC. I, I haven't tried anchor yet. Uh, Jane Panovich said to try to always come up through an unoccupied hole mm -hmm. and to try a laying tool. And the minute I saw that, I was like, oh. I have one. I used to use one of those oh. in needlepoint. So as you bring the thread over, this sort of helps the two strands lie parallel. I don't know. I usually use one strand. I have not tried that yet, but now, that's what. Because I'm wondering how that would feel stitching in hand. Do you think you would need to that still work? I think so. I know some people hold something that just looks like, I don't know, like a pointer or something. Mm -hmm. This one happens to be on. The thumb. This is the one I had in my sewing box. Yeah, I guess I guess your thumb is typically on top, isn't it? When you're... So I think I could. <coughs> anyway, uh, I thought that was interesting. And then Pam Sabrell said, try beeswax and running the thread through your fingers first. And actually, that's that is something that I'm trying. And it really it reminded me of something Natalie Channon of Alabama Channon, mm. the company mm -hmm. Alabama Channon says she to love your thread. Now she's talking oh, about yeah. threads for sewing garments, but she says to just there's a natural extra twist in a thread, and she says to kind of go like this to relax the thread. It's kind of my, the opposite of my problem, but um, it reminded me. So I am, you, I'll, I'll show you in one of my pieces, I've tried a little okay. beeswax. I'm not sure if beeswax is great to use on something that's white, 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 because I don't know if it just, does it add any color to it? I, I, I wonder about that. So, okay, there is another mm -hmm. wondering. And I've read a little bit about it and some people are, are keen on it and some people think it might discolor. But mm -hmm. anyway, I'm trying it. Yeah. Okay. So lots, lots of good, good things. Um, yeah, so I do notice light colors in general. Okay. Can you everybody hear? That's just our dog Coco, and she's just going to do that periodically. So <laughs> welcome to welcome to the world. Um, all right. So really, a lot has happened since our a last lot. To a lot of um, <laughs> just good, bad, and different things have happened. So we both finished our school year. Um, so I've been out of school now for about two weeks, and you've been out for about a week. Yeah, yeah. Our responsibilities. My so yeah. we're sort of really easing into that summer summer groove. Oh, yeah. 
and my son got married a couple of weeks ago, which was, of course, so, so exciting it for our family. So they, they just looked so happy and it makes everybody else so happy. And they had a great dance party. Mm -hmm. um, they were they got married in the San Francisco Bay Area, so their hashtag was S and J by the Bay. Right. So a Here's toast to, to S and J, J by, by the, the Bay. Bay. Congrats, you two. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just gonna move a text out of my that's my thumb. Okay, there it is. Um oh gosh, it keeps coming back. Hold on one more second. Okay, all right, I think it's about it was such a fabulous weekend and a lot of our family that's from out of town we have a really big extended family almost everybody was able to make it and many many people came so it was really fun i thought i would show too i kept um my place card remember anna showed these on the very first um episode that we had and she did the paperwork and the sewing on paper and the names and then the mother of the bride added the um, drawing of the leaves for that for that and then um, here's a fun, there's a photo booth. Everyone was just having so much fun if you've been to a wedding and photo booth. So here's one of all of our sisters. Um, we were just having fun in the photo booth, so all five of us. Um, so it's a really, really great time for everybody, I think. Yeah, um, really something to celebrate. It was nice. They got married on a Sunday, and you all hosted it really close to the same venue, which is a really nice outdoor, they called it a welcome event, which was what sort of like five to seven, just with yeah, snacks mm -hmm. and drinks. It was all outside. It was so, so great. It was just like a nice way. Everybody felt really included and came. It was a nice way to kind of catch up with everybody before the big, the big day. Yeah. Um, so I can't stop thinking about it. It was just I so know, fun. I know. It's like one of those things you kind of, for like several weeks, you're still like, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. And they are such a fabulous couple. Just made it so joyous um, for that. Mm -hmm. So let's see what else. Um, I've had COVID. So I'm finally negative again, which feels really, really I'm good. So glad, I know. Caroline. I know. We I lasted over two years teaching, so that's pretty good. And I'm glad if, if I'm going to get it. I'm glad I have it. I'm glad it was okay, and I'm glad it happened in the summer because I can't imagine um, like having to miss school for that and how many days. Because even though like I wouldn't have been in school, I probably would have still been doing my lesson plans and grading and doing a lot of stuff. So I really got that luxury um, of just being able to be sick. And, and to rest and, and, and to rest, rest yeah. and recover yeah so that was yeah. good um and i guess along the way through all these these ups and downs and funds and you know life we just did a lot of stitching yeah and there were some actually some chunks of time when i didn't do any stitching but i thought about stitching. that's right right if we weren't <laughs> stitching we were thinking about stitching i know like a couple of days COVID, i'm just like i didn't even feel like stitching but i listened to a lot of audio books that can kind of have those going in the background so that, that was nice to do yeah um, all right, so Anna, let's get started. Um, so what are you wearing today? I'm wearing a Maya top, mm -hmm. and the pattern designer is Maria Walker. And again, in a floaty rayon. I've just been using a lot of rayon the last couple of years. It's kind mm -hmm. of become my uniform um, to wear a floaty top with jeans. Mm -hmm. And, I, mm -hmm. and uh, my school is a ca casual, has a casual wardrobe, so I can wear this kind of mm -hmm. thing to school. And I made this a couple of summers ago, and I, oh. it, I wear it a lot. Watch. I, in particular, I love the sleeves, and I think mm. maybe because of the floaty linen, because they kind they they're a little bit more than a cap sleeve, but they don't like stick out. It's very much nice over your Yeah, shoulder. I mean, this blouse is almost a rectangle. It has a little bit of uh, curve in the hem, and of course, I added length. Yeah, uh, as usual. So yeah, yeah. So That's what about nice. you? Okay, so I'm wearing, and we'll do our catwalk, so you'll get a better look. But I'm wearing a dress, and it's called the tendril dress. And this is a pattern by the store. It's called A Verb for Keeping Warm. And it's a, a store in Oakland, California. Um, if you are in the Bay Area or even check them out, I'll, I'll put a link to them. They're a really, really, really cool store. They really, um, they focus on natural dyeing and they have a dye studio there and they dye their own yarn. They, But then they also do sewing and stitching and just all kinds of, I love their name, a verb for keeping warm. So any kind of handcraft relating to fiber arts for making, um, they, making yeah. um, they do. They have great classes beautiful, there. Beautiful, beautiful supplies. Beautiful. Yeah. And the owner has also written two really fabulous books on natural dyeing. So if you're interested in that, and they also carry all the um, natural dye supplies. So they are a great resource for that. And I just did it in some sort of turquoise linen. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's a Merchant and Mills uh, washed linen. It is. Okay, good. Thank you, Anna. You're welcome. And um, it's a little hot today, but I thought I would pull this out because this is the piece that I wear with this dress a lot. And again, with a catwalk, you'll see it. But it's a shawl. It's called the Starting Point Shawl. Um, Hold it in and we'll kind of oh, go sure. through. Because it it's big. Long. 
But in California, where we have um, a season and a day, often um, by the time it's evening time, maybe like right now it's high 80s, but by this evening it could be in the low 60s or even high 50s. So okay. we're constantly um, layering. And this was a really fun shawl to knit because it was knit as a mystery knit along. So we got Oh, food. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, we were just told to get um, five yarns and they she sort of told about like the different value of the yarns. This is all Madeline Tosh fingering yarn. And then um, I think over the course of maybe five or six weeks, you would get a new clue, a new clue as you go along. So it was a really fun project and something I wear with this dress a lot. I want to go back to that dress for a minute because yeah. remember that dress was cut on the bias. Did you say that? Oh, no, I didn't. I forgot about that. Uh, which is what we'll, you'll see on the catwalk. It falls so beautifully and you really need the wide 56 inch fabric mm. to get it, if you want it as long as, as yours. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I'm just, as I look over, I can see the diagonal. You can see the bias. Right here. It's very, it just, yeah, it's very comfortable. Um, and I'll show you in the catwalk too. It had a French seams. I'm a very just advanced beginner sewer, but the French seams are really easy to do and it makes a really nice finish like inside the dress, really simple. Yeah. Um, if I was gonna make this again, I would make this dress again. One thing I'd do is just lower the neckline just a tad and raise the underarm just a tad. Which I tried, I made a second one, one and I raised the underarm, but I raised it too much. Oh, and then you're so like, like I need super, to, super tight in there. Yeah, and it, it pull, it's pulling against my chest, so I need to cut it out a little bit. So I, I think I raised it a little bit too much. Yeah, but so. Okay, and we'll go ahead and insert our catwalk video now. back hope you enjoyed that um, all right so what we thought we should start kickstart um today is talking about our schools out sal sal mm -hmm. so we started it last wednesday which was uh june 15th thank you for waiting for me i know i waited we really wanted to wait so it was anna's really first down day from school i was also on day six of my covid so it was really nice where anna lives there's a nice sort of open space so we were able to sit outside really um safely distance from each other i brought my magnifying lamp <laughs> out with my extension cord <laughs> yeah and i just would have my mask whenever we got close yeah um, it was great so it was great and we'll insert a picture of um, where we were at the starts and us and our mask when we got our picture we'll put that picture right now um okay so uh, first of all, it's been super fun. Several of you have joined us and we keep checking out the hashtag on Instagram or people on um, have commented on YouTube that they're starting. So if, you're, if you've joined in, I hope you're having a good time. Not, it's like so lax, it's never too late to join. <laughs> like anytime no, where you're no just rules. feeling like the vibe of like, hey, school's out, we're in summertime, uh, maybe, or maybe you just have a nice memory of that feeling of the last day of school. Um, just pick a project that you think you might wanna spend some time on this summer um, and join us. Um, right. We have some teachers. We have someone who's actually retiring from mm -hmm, teacher this year mm -hmm. the, or someone who has been retired for a while. But any, any, any yeah. welcome, uh, as you said. Well, there's a woman that she says she's the lunch lady at her grand uh, kids school. So she's on summer break from being the lunch, the lunch, the lunch woman, the lunch monitor. Yeah. So love it. Really fun. Okay. So do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? Um, I, uh, I'll go first. Okay. So I did decide on... GR Red Deer Sampler, which I have admired since I came back to cross stitching a year and a half ago. Uh, there's just something about it. I think because I love to stitch flowers so much, the fact that it's basically full of flowers. And a deer. And a big deer. Yeah. Uh, and I am stitching it on 32 count Confederate Gray by Weeks Dye Works. And I'm using mostly the called for over dyed cottons and DMC. I've already put, replaced this green for a slightly darker green. Carolyn happened to have a slightly darker yeah. green as we were stitching and she said, try this one uh, because the other green just wasn't showing up. And I'm still missing a few colors too. I, I bought the DMC equivalents. Oops. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Can you see yeah, the yeah. colors? <laughs> I think I meant to do this. Um, so I think I'll try to find some over dyes because I just love a little bit of variation in them for this particular piece um, at a cross stitch store and see what yeah, I can find. You know, I think that's a nice way to do it is if you don't have the over dye, but you want an over dye, get the DMC and use that as your color palette. 
yeah. in case you're trying is trying to match it. This yeah. is so pretty, Anna. Thanks. I, I'm really, really enjoying it, and I am. What I think the reason I picked it, one of the main reasons I picked it for the summer is that it's bigger than anything. Well, I guess I have one other big thing, but it's big, and I just it doesn't feel overwhelming to me because I'm in the state of I'm in the beginning of the summer, and I feel like I have all this time ahead of me so i love these so are these are all around the border so yeah this and goes all the way around there, there are some colors inside i like the way they look they look kind of lacy and because mm -hmm. i'm only doing one strand on 32 it has a little bit of a lacy look in the first place um but i think i, I will fill them in with the additional colors I'm, i don't know if we can see one of the whites those are the, the really light colors are the ones i'm using the beeswax on and the beeswax does kind of have the thread sort of kind of keep to itself it doesn't flare out um, and the coverage looks a little different yeah so for example is that would that have been beeswaxed yeah definitely this mm -hmm. this one uh, it's, it might be too hard to see I was watching Olivia B's most recent floss tube and I believe she was stitching one thread over 32 but she had a section that was white and she did that two strands. So yeah, she mixed and matched. Um, so that might be an interesting to see because this one in particular does feel just the tiniest bit sparse. Yeah, yeah. So I may play with that. And I'm having so much fun with these flowers, like finding my preferred route. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've tried sort of like a different thing each one. And there's many more to go because yeah. this really <laughs> is just the top, just the top corner. Um, I remember you did the first motif and I'm like, that's so pretty. And then when I looked at the pattern, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like the tiniest little bit up in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. But weeks of fun ahead. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not even trying to finish it by the end of the right. summer. I don't want to put any pressure on myself. I'm just enjoying, enjoying it growing. Well, those flowers. I love those geometric flowers. Yeah. That looks really great. Anna. So I'm, I'm, I'm very satisfied and feeling very schools out Sal. Yeah. Okay. All right, what about you, Carol? Yeah. So I have this in my Anna bag, and I'm working on Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird's Designs. And here's my progress so far. Mm. It's, it's just so fun. I mean, when you when you did the two flowers, I'm like, those are so pretty together. And then the pair, I guess I it feels kind of like a little more neutral, and it just makes them look even better. And I the, really like and the, the pair. pair has about five different colors. I think I, this is my first blackbird piece, and I'm really feeling that they will take, or even these little buds or pine cones, you know, a couple shades in there. So you really get, and they're very subtly similar and a bit different um, for that. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm stitching this on 36 count linen, and I'm just using this Weigart Light Mocha. And I want to give a shout out to Chris, the camping stitcher. I was um, looking at her Instagram when I was thinking about stitching Oh Joyous Day and I'm like, oh, I love her color of linen. Uh, so I just reached out to her and she very kindly let me know what she was using and then I ordered it and I'm using the same thing. She makes beautiful there, things. Oh she my really does. So I was really happy with that. I'm using the call for over dyed and I'm stitching one strand over two threads. It looks great. So very happy with that. Um, a couple of things is, oh my gosh, it was one of the days I had finished a lot of things and we'll see it later. And I only had, this was my main work in progress. And I was <laughs> sitting back in my, isolating back in my bedroom and I spilled seltzer water oh, yeah. on this. And it was just, it drenched it. And then, so I'm like, darn, what am I going to stitch tonight? And then <laughs> as it dried, it did leave a watermark. So I went ahead and go, okay, what the heck? And I just drenched the whole thing. I wet the whole thing and just hung it up to dry. And it was great. It dried and I didn't, there was one spot. I still have a little water damage on the edge, but that's just, I must not have gotten that all the way wet and it's in my, my margin. Yeah. But one thing I really am happy that that happened is, um, I was, it was Katie. Oh, Strachan. Mm -hmm. Okay. She talks about wet blocking her cross stitch pieces. And this is in reference to her harmony box. And I thought, okay, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'd want to wet block. And she talks about how you can, what you can do if your, your threads run. But now I'm like, I got this whole thing drenched and it was fine. So I'm going to try doing a little wet blocking yeah. of my pieces. And it dried really flat. So I think that might be a nice way any lingering wrinkles um, would come out of that. So Yeah, I haven't um, watched that video yet, but I, I want to. Yeah. Let me see what else do I want to say about this. That, that, that. Oh, 
it's so interesting to me what a difference a small dot will have. All right, so I have that horizontal band going and it's the zigzag band. And if you can see in that zigzag band, half of it, I've added ah. a very small, the sm it's a little smart across. And then on the other half, I left it blank because to me, it made such a difference. That as is amazing. As soon as that little dot was in, it felt more finished. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to me how sometimes just that little small detail. And at this point now, I'm just kind of doing some of my infrastructure. I'm, uh, I I want to hold. I want to move downwards um, because I stitch in hand. I kind of move um, whatever direction this to this because I'm holding this part of the fabric. So I'm sort of going to stop this band and start moving um, downwards now. So yeah, we're both doing direction. that, aren't we? Because I'm definitely a mm -hmm. scruncher. Um, yeah, I'm so a scruncher. I, mm -hmm. I like or I hold all this stuff while I'm stitching. Mm -hmm. So I stitch that part last. So I'm kind of working down. I'll do this flower, and I just can't wait to get to the bird. But I'm going to have to be um, patient with that. That's right. All in good time. Uh, all in good time. So this has been a really fun project. Let me pull out my floss. Oh yeah, girl. Yeah. Um, before I was organizing my floss on the ring by color, I just put the colors next as I like to see them. And then I'm like, oh, it's hard to find it. So I just have it alphabetical now, but still super And pretty. you had the idea of making smaller mm -hmm. rings. You shared that with me. And mm -hmm. I've been trying that a little bit for red deer sampler. Like I'll look and see what colors am I going to need for this particular flower. And I make a little ring because this, that, my sampler has tons of colors. Mm -hmm. And it feels kind of peaceful and doable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have one of those later on too to show. So that's our schools out, um, SAL. Please join along at any point if you want to, and we'll kind of keep you posted as we work on this um, throughout the summer. Yeah, it has started. Okay, let's move on now and um, talk about some of our finished objects. Okay. So it's all cross-stitched this week, and I'll go ahead and start. And the first one I'm gonna show is, I've been working on my seasonal etchings. These are just so cute and so pretty. Uh, I love when they pop up on Instagram. And we posed the question about whether these had been released, oh, yeah. uh, remember, individually, because the bunny, I've seen a lot of people um, stitch the bunny, but the bunny is a mirror image in the ones I've seen. And uh, Jean Truckee has confirmed that these were published um, in the Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher I think magazine. We had three commenter, commenters say, who say knew that. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, and they, uh, so one of them also said, you got to check out that magazine if you haven't. I've never seen it. I, I haven't. So I'll let you look oh, you at it. Oh, you haven't? Oh, yeah. I got right. Brenda of uh, shared supplies. Uh, yeah, I know. Brenda was like, everybody's got to get this magazine. You've got to get it first class mail so it comes nice and like neat. So I've done that, and so we can um, show that. I had no idea. Great. I was thinking, um, somebody I saw finished it on Instagram. She did it like this. I'm doing it individually, but I also thought it would look really nice having all four horizontally mm. together to have a more horizontal piece and just go like that. I wonder or, if anyone's done that. Have you looked or, at the hashtag? Um, I have it. Or it could make, I think, like a nice drum if you did it like that, or just like a more horizontal band. So I thought that might be another way to stitch that. All right, so enough chit-chatting. Um, here it is. Here are my, my summer fish. Really, really. I think those are so fun. And you're probably like, okay, like, Carolyn, have you finished the bunny? Uh, no. But it's... It, <laughs> wait, you have... What, well, what? I finished the bunny, but I, I oh, finished, showed finished. last time like finished. I was going to fully finish, and, yeah. I, and I haven't gotten to that yet. Um, let's just say Cohen. I'll be my, I'll I know we don't one. have to pick a favorite, but I think the fish, know, the fish are, I, I think I like the change in direction. I do too. And I like how each fish, the interior is a different design. Mm -hmm. um, our maiden name is also Fisher. So growing uh, up, you know, people, that was our nickname. Everybody called us fish. So maybe it's had that. a lot of fish. So I think we're just naturally um, attracted to fish. Yeah. So. Really enjoy that. And I'm definitely gonna stitch um, all four of them, but I think I'm gonna pause now and maybe in August or September, come back around and do the autumn and the winter so when it's a little bit more in season. Yeah, that sounds fun. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. I had a start and a finish, just sort of spur of the moment. I downloaded this from Jacob's site, Modern Folk Embroidery. It's called Summer Bower. And, oh shoot, I forgot to bring over, this was the linen that you were using, Carolyn, uh, oh. originally for, season, is it Seasons of the Heart? Seasons of the Heart, spring. That's right. That's and right. the threads were not showing up, but this is the Gentle Art Country Redwood, and I think it looks that, the, Your floss, your floss. The floss is, yeah, and the linen is up in the attic, 36 mm -hmm. count by Fox and Rabbit. 
So this is one strand over two threads and oh, just so fun. The symmetry, doing something small. I enjoyed every minute of it. Mm -hmm. And then I happened upon, I had this little fabric remnant and I'm gonna make a little pillow. Yeah, I nice. just, I know there is no blue green in this, but <laughs> I okay. just, okay. I like the way they look together. I, there's something about the browns in the motifs on the fabric that I like with the fab with, with the linen. So I'm gonna make a little pillow, okay. try some walnut shells. That's that's my idea of what to do. I love that. Uh, I, first of all, Jacob's designs, there's just something about them, their graphicness of them I really like. And these, that style flower, and I think you have this style flower too, a little bit on your red deer. Yeah. A little bit more yeah. geometric. Yeah, there's no space between the triangle, triangular parts. Yeah but there's stripes of a lighter color instead of the space. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the thread that this is a more uh, variegated um, thread? What do it's you think quite, about it's that? It's quite fair. I, I, for this particular project, totally digging it. The only thing I thought of is there's, I don't know if it's, we'll pick it up. There's a spot right here that is almost like pinky orange. And it looks a little bit like a belly button to me. Like, <laughs> I love it. like it's right, it's not exactly in the center, but it really sticks out. Oh yeah. And I thought about changing it and I'm like, nah. I'll yeah, it. it's probably one of those things, like as soon as you see it, you can see it. Yeah, because there's, there's a little bit, a little hint of pink here and there. Yeah, I just did, with variegated thread in general, I'm still sort of learning and deciding for myself if I mind, if I get sort of a stripey look or there's a lot of difference in one motif. I, and I'm just kind of, just uncertain as so I'm just kind of using it for a while. Mm -hmm. So, and because I'm stitching with one strand instead of two, like sometimes I think people combine two different Ooh. when you variations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know it like yarn when you have variegated yarn, some people can do this thing called pooling where some people like oh, it, yeah. some people don't care yeah. for that. But often when you hold two strands, that gets a little bit more uh, mixed in. Okay, I just gotta tell you, TMI, it's really humid here right now. Are you, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm super We're, sweaty. We need to do a little of this. I know. Ah. So if you see me like kind of like doing that, it's it's surprisingly humid. It doesn't really get humid here. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's feeling that way. Yep. Okay, awesome. All right, what's next? Next, wait, so. Oh, um, here, speaking of Seasons of the Heart. Seasons of the Heart, speaking of that. Right, so Seasons of the Heart is by Brenda Gervais. And I worked on summer and I finished summer. Bleep, bleep. Worked on spring and I finished spring. My goal was I definitely wanted to have it finished before it was summer and I definitely did that. And here it is. Mm, the colors. And the pattern gives you the option if you don't want to put the seasonal tag on there, you just continue that bottom border um, like I did. This. this also had um, some of my first specialty stitches. So inside <laughs> these little flowers through there was a Smyrna cross. And I'm glad this Smyrna cross was over like more like four threads. So it was a little bit bigger. And that was great because it was good practice because when I just did the Smyrna cross on the Oh Joyous Day, it was, it was over just two threads. And at least I knew a little bit more what I was doing. A couple of things I thought about this when I was stitching this is this big border here, it really, I felt this layering of colors where I first came through with the vine, which is a darker green. Then I added the light green leaves and then the flowers are in two colors of uh, sort of the pinky red and the dark and the light. And it just felt like this idea, like like a silk screen, like when you silk screen, oh, yeah, you yeah, put yeah. these layers of colors over your design. I got that real feeling of that layer of colors. And I feel like this maybe is my most in intricate border I've done so far with that, with that feeling of that. Um, yeah, so that was fun. Now, one thing I want your advice on is I love how many of the colors has to have two, like a dark and a light. So the green has a dark and a light, the pink has a dark and a light. And then there's this, this greeny blue that's for the door and the basket. And it's the same one. And my eye kind of wants the basket at the top to be a darker version of the door. I thought you were going to say the opposite. Yeah, I thought you were going to say you want it to be the light, a lighter version, a darker version of the door. Hmm. Well, I'll be curious. Yeah. I don't know. What do, you, what do you think? think? Yeah. Okay. So um, love... I, 
I don't have a strong, yeah, have a I strong know, opinion. It's, it's probably fine, absolutely the way it is, but there's something about like the dark and the light, the dark and the light. I'm like, oh, wouldn't it be pretty to have that door just slightly darker and make that the basket? I probably won't change it because it's stitched, but I would love to hear what, what you would think. Would you have made either the door or the basket? Have you tried uh, kind of holding up colors to it? I haven't, yeah. I haven't. And next time we go to a, a store, I thought maybe I'd go and just see, is there a DMC? Because the that blue is a DMC. Just what's in that lit. family? What's hmm. in that family is slightly darker. So. Okay. And that one I'm gonna finish as a small pillow. Yeah. Okay. So I'm excited for that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stitch summer next. And I'm, I was all kitted up and ready to start yesterday, which was the summer solstice. But here in Northern California, it, we have a huge heat wave. It was like 102 degrees, which is really, really hot for us. And I'm, I'm just like, I can't start anything new because I would have to get out the iron to iron the um, lid. And I'm like, there's no way that's happening. But I do have all my flosses, so that's ready to go. You have a little jewelry I on know. here. Thank you for noticing. I decided I'd try a little um, bling for my floss too. I mean, for my floss. And this is from Samplings of Memory, Memories of Sampling, Samplings of Memory. Everybody knows. Remembers? Samplings know. Remembered. I don't know. Uh, she sells a lot of these different ones. And so far, I kind of like it. You know, that's that feeling on the keychain where you have something heavy or on your backpack or something. A little jiggle jiggle too. A little jiggle jiggle. Jiggle jiggle. jiggle. Um, so that's ready to go. And I might try to start that um, tonight. And it was really fun. If it's cool enough. I think it'll be, I can feel the breeze. Oh, it's already, in it's right already now. cool. It's already like 10 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. We have a, our shared supplies, and so I actually went through and just made sure all of our floss was up to date. And I made a little spreadsheet. So when you I did, went, I, I thought you were going to say you have some of these in our shared supply, and I was going to take it home. I, I have a second one. I also got a Christmas one if you want to. I, I was going to save that, or you can go ahead and take it. But it was fun because when I went to kit this up, maybe about half of the colors I already had. Yeah, that's that surprising to me at this point. Um, and I wonder if the designer, because I've, I've stitched a couple things by Brenda Gervais, so maybe she uh, does yeah. some repeat colors or has some favorite colors. Um, and then I just filled in the ones I didn't have. So that was really satisfying to be like, oh, I have that one, I have that one. I have mm -hmm. that one. So Great. That's all ready to go. Yeah, you hear people say that about Blackbird. Uh, right. The colors. Yeah. Right. They might they might have that. And especially some of these skeins, maybe you just use, you know, a few threads. So you can um, yeah. definitely and use And the opposite. Some parts. of the skeins, I'm like, is this going to last? I know. I know. Uh, again, that's something that I think we just have to learn from doing, doing, doing. I know. I think sometimes I should buy two and I don't. Yeah. Then you get them when you need it. Okay. Let's see. I have one more finished one. All right. So oh, this oh, one, oh, I oh, know. Oh. Okay. This one is called Forest by Satsuma Street. Forest. And I absolutely love this piece from beginning to end. This is so uh, this, you. The stitching of it, the colors. It was awesome. Um, a couple things stitching this is it really I love when you're stitching you become so observant so just by looking at a picture you might think that you've seen a lot of details but it's not until you go to stitch mm -hmm. that you see it for example she the um, the designer Jody did these really beautiful color mixing when the trees overlap yeah I did not notice that at first either until yeah and you mentioned it to she me. does it on all of the trees and just that so color pretty. and that was like a, a great little detail i also felt like each tree was it's had its own personality mm -hmm. and as you're stitching along i really kind of went tree by tree and at the end i just feel like this is a like a big family or a group of friends yeah like, i can see that and so that had just like a really nice um feeling to it and oh and this is the one with the where you did the small this is the one where i was doing the small so here are a bunch of all you know the dmcs but as i would go tree by tree the trees themselves only would have maybe four or five Look colors at those colors oh my and, and then i would pull out this i call it my sub palette and what was so <laughs> okay. fun about this my sub palette yeah so that was my sub palette for my very last tree i was so sad when i stitched that very last tree but what was neat is sometimes you look at all of these and you go okay that's just a lot of color but every time I pulled out a sub palette, it was its own little, like, beautifully constructed yeah. four to five colors. Part of the genius and of the it, design, and, yeah. And it was so fun. I'd go, okay, here's my next tree. Okay, what's my palette for that? So I think that's something, again, when you have a lot of threads like you're doing too, it's a great way to pull them out. And also just loving your threads and loving color, mm -hmm. um, you can see that. So this is very, um, to me, very mid-century modern. and. I live in a very mid-century modern Northern California house, so this 
this is this very much fits my vibe definitely i also love found i love i love stitching big blocks of color and this had a lot of that so i'm gonna um I, i'll have a second pattern by her called um it might be like autumn bird or something like that. It's, it's leaves and a bird. I think you should. I've shown it before. Uh -huh. So I'm going to get the DMC for that the next time I, I go to Michael's or something and I'm going to stitch that. Mm -hmm. And I stitched this on what were my, what was my, oh, it was a 32 count. It's a mystery linen, but I have a clue that makes me think that it's exemplar by Lakeside. So if you have any experience with Lakeside, if you think this might be the exemplar color, I'd love to know that. I used call for DMCs and it's one. Um, strand over two threads again 32 um count and i feel like the coverage was good you know that. yeah i do too um take this next time we go to a a needle in a, in a, in a haystack because oh. maybe they'll have exemplar. maybe they have that yeah and then we can do that not you know it doesn't matter that much it's kind of fun to and i like using a, a slightly more neutrally linen for the bright colors because i feel like it really grounded them and yeah. she used it she uses just natural it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, I like really it on that too. It's natural. It's really, I don't know, do you feel this way? I feel so sad. I have that feeling of nostalgia whenever I finish a piece and it takes me a couple of days. Yeah. Um, and I finished pretty quickly. I finished that spring. I finished my fish. I finished this. I spilled water on my Ojoy's day. I know. Like, you said to me, I need some more things to work I, on. I need and some I'm, more whips. I'm like, let's get you going. I know. Okay. So that's yeah. forest. Right. So that, those are our finished objects. So we each have now two works in progress. You want to go first, Anna? Sure. I picked the Huntu sampler up again, but uh, Fred would work primitives. I just added a little bit to it, but I am still enjoying this, this spot motif style sampler. And I think I maybe did one and a half more motifs, maybe th two or three. And um, yeah, so I'll, I'll keep at that. I think I did it. A, Ooh, I think you did. We put it up because we'll put a progress photo on top of my face so we can compare what you had before. Yeah, I, I think I pulled this out on one of my, let's say, denser series of days last month. And it felt, well, like an old familiar uh -huh. friend. Mm -hmm. Kind of easy to access, three total colors and yeah, I'll probably finish that this summer. We'll mm -hmm. see. I, I really like that one. Yeah, it's so pretty. All right, and then my very last whip. I actually pulled this one back out when my Oh Joy's Day was wet, and I was like, oh, what am I going to do? I need some stitching. And this is up Spring Moon, and it's by Plum Street Samplers, and it is exclusive to Fox and Rabbit, I believe still at this point. I'm sure it will become readily available. And this is the one I'm using, um, Seraphin Fabrics Regency, it's 32 count, but it's actually stitching up at 35 count. So, and this is, I'm doing two threads, two strands over two threads. And we talked about this in a previous episode, I think episode two, where it's feeling very, very dense. Um, I think it's pretty. I yeah, like it. I think it's pretty too. My hands do not gravitate to picking it up because I feel like I'm slightly fighting yeah. Um, especially where it's full coverage. The back looks cool too. Yeah. I really dig this cut off flower on that edge. Yeah. It'll get filled out. I'm waiting to fill it in. There's another one of those big flowers on the other side and I'll, I'll do their centers together since they use the same colors. But I mean the way it looks like someone took a rotary cutter. Oh, and just cut it, it off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I like I'm it. Cool in there. So I'm definitely going to finish this. Um, I, it's not my favorite to work on. And I find I just have to sort of go a little zen because I'm like, don't fight your, I have to more like back it up and just sort of say, don't try to pull too hard. Because I think sometimes I'm stitching a little tighter, mm. wanting to make sure I have a hole to come back up. Oh, I can see that, yeah. Um, I'm that. <coughs> Excuse me. So it is a good kind of zen to do that. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot of, it's, it's a lot of full coverage. It is a it lot. Is. It's, a, it's a lot. But cool design. And chip away. I mean, that, that's it. This one is just going to chip away. But I do feel like I'm, I'm going to need a couple more whips. Definitely. Between no joys today. Let's get you going. Got to get going on that. Okay. All right. So those are our works in progress. Let's um, talk about some shared supplies yeah, yeah, yeah. that we have. Why don't you try those patterns? Okay. I've, got, I've collected a few patterns. So I have um, two patterns that continue with, with our fractor idea. 
Um, and here's one, this is called Red Bird Fractor. And this is by, oh, I should know this. I think this is by Brenda Gervais. Why don't I dig in there while you talk? Okay. Okay, that, that one, let me just show it one time. Okay. Let's, let's pull it. <coughs> you can dig in there and see. Uh, with thy needle and thread. Yeah. I'm looking forward to stitching those birds. Oh, yeah, and I like the colors. I, I think this might be a fun one to stitch in the fall. Mm -hmm. And this one uh, was Teresa yeah. Kogut. This is her fractor. And I don't know if I'll stitch the whole thing, but I like the motifs a lot. And I still have that back idea of, of doing some sort of heritage sampler mm -hmm. with names and everything, and maybe using different fractor designs as part of it. This really reminds me of some of the museum pieces we found. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. And then I'm also, I totally want to participate in Sampler September this year. So I'm starting to like think about what samplers I might I'll wanna. Be, gonna, and, I wanna get thinking on that too then. Yeah. So I picked this one, Sarah Fletcher. A lot of people have been stitching this, Hands Across the Sea. I love how simple it is. And for this one, my very first piece I stitched to um, commemorate or honor my two granddaughters that were born in 2020. And I thought this would be a really nice one to commemorate my two granddaughters born in 2022. So maybe put something in there for them. Like that one? Yeah, I love that idea. And then this is very similar to your style. Oh, I'm dying this over is called that. called Queenstown Sampler Design uh, BH1820. And this person, let's see who designed this, Queenstown Sampler Designs. Um, they reproduced it with the colors from the back of the sampler. So these would be the true colors that the, that the stitcher stitched with or you can pick the colors that it has faded into. And I, I'm still on the fence which way I want to go, but I think, Anna, looking at your spot sample that you were working on and feeling a little Project Envy, um, I saw this one. And a few of these motifs, like, what is that thing in the middle? Like, it's probably a flower, but it looks like some spider, sort of like spider or flower. insect. It's, yeah, it looks like um, an insect that is floating on the water. So this yeah, one, this is, I love all the space between the motifs. And it might be just be a question of going and kind of pulling the threads for both or a few for Maybe both. Maybe I'll do one, you do the yeah, other. Let's do that. Okay. That'd be but really I, fun. I have a strong preference. I, you probably want the older colors or the, the, yeah, the faded do. colors. I do. I, I, yeah, because I could easily also do the, the brighter ones. So that might be really fun. So right now, I think I want to maybe for sample September have two or three samplers that I'll start. I know. Listen to me. Listen to me. I know, probably two. I'll probably pick two. Um, and these are just some that are in the running right now. But I want to have it all kitted up and ready to go because sometimes those things like hit and everybody's going and if you, it takes a while. Yeah, and at the start of the gather. school year, we know it's going to be, we'll be spending a lot of time on our schoolwork, so it'll be nice to just have it waiting for you. Oh, yeah, a little present ready to go. Yeah, maybe we need to work on that in July. Mm -hmm. You've inspired me. Okay. What do you got going? Okay. Um, Did you have some patterns? So, yeah. After stitching this, I found these little pin cushions on Jacob's website. I'm like, well, I need to do them all. I know. I love them so much. So I was curious to see if our local needlepoint store happened to carry some of the over dyed cottons that are popular with cross stitching. And oh. indeed they do. Mm -hmm. So I just went and picked some ready pinky orangey threads just to mess around with. I might do each bird in a different color and we have more of the up in the up attic. Because mm -hmm. I really am liking mm -hmm. the reds on those. And then I, I went to a fabric <laughs> store last week. Strawberry fabric everywhere. So I'm already thinking, well, I will back it with strawberries. So nice, Anna. Yeah, so I got the threads, the fabric, the patterns. And especially with the red deer being so big and intense, maybe I'll have a little bird going too. I love Isn't this as variations on a theme. Mm -hmm. You know what's really cool too, if you wanted to, I'm not saying to do this, but you could also design those motifs into your own one piece sampler. Like, and you know how like sometimes the Bristol samplers, they may have some just borders you could add. So like the hexagony idea. Either that or, or just you could, since they're all rectangular, but you could maybe put in like some borders or some different things to, to pull them some together. Some doodads, some you could, initials. You could do some doodads, initials. Yeah, that hasn't occurred so to me yet. That could be fun. Okay. Okay, I can't wait to see those. Those, those, look, yeah. those look great. And then I also, when I was at the fabric store, I'm really itching to do some garment sewing. So 
I found this. Oh, this is out. a favorite brand of mine, IPT. For they have some classic children's outfits, and this little romper is calling that to me because romper, some of our little ones aren't walking yet. That romper is too much. And then, so I just oh. picked a little blue. And I said, you got? Did you get this at Needles Studio? Of course I yeah, did. Yeah. Okay, because I, I recognize that. Family. Did you make bloomers out of this? No. You just, no, okay, but I, I thought I, I was considering that one. Okay. And then I also another well, it's cotton rayon blend for a blouse for me. I want to make something with uh, some sort of puff sleeve. That's in the puff sleeve is in. So nice, maybe a blouse. Nice. Right, I got a couple um, things from Kitten Stitcher. So the first thing is I bought um, a couple fabrics to make a project bag from that. And this is Teresa Kogut's her new line, and I couldn't resist that big red tree yeah. in the green forest. A red house in the green forest. Yeah, That's that it. that uh -huh. that is really effective. I love how many tree the ratio of trying to trees out. I know, and I think even on the project bag, trying to get just like one house yes. there. For yes, yes, yes. And then this was a um, part of the Blackbird by Moda, and. I thought it would go as a, as the coordinating fabric for inside. I'm really happy with that. So yeah. that's going to be a, a fabric bag, a project bag that I'm going to make. Um, I've heard some Great people choices. like to do like Christmas in July, so I think I might participate in that. Mm -hmm. I'm really into participating in all these kind of things. It's so fun. It is. It, they're all so fun. And then uh, we're just again building up our linen collection. I think especially because um, I know kits always put gives you a sticker. So I love that. Um, and I've never tried X, uh, J, XJU Designs, XJU Designs, so I picked a couple of her linens, 36 count. This one is called uh, Brown Paper, mm. and it almost maybe a little of a yellowy, yellowy brown. And this maybe has a, peachy. yeah, maybe, and then this is a, um, this is called Light Nougat, and this has just a little hint of maybe a little red mm -hmm. or peach. Um, I'm finding I'm gravitated slightly more to the lighter linens yeah, I than the darker. It's surprising me a little bit. So I've just been trying to get a few more um, lighter things to put in our stash. I think I've got Beautiful. back quarters of those. Yeah, if I, I've wondered how to say the name of that mm -hmm. dyer, and I even did an internet search, and I just I haven't found an answer yet. Mm -hmm. So if anyone knows if, if it's XJU or XJU, right? <coughs> I know she's from Hungary. Hungary. So that would be good to look up. And then I got um, just a couple of books. So this first one was inspired by Christine at the Mountain Crafts Studio, and it's about embroidered boxes. Oh my. She's working right now on the Harmony Box designed I by Katie Strachan. It, it go at Mountain Crafts Studio, so technically mm -hmm. beautiful crafter, lots of different things. She's working on that box, so I'm gonna follow her process. But um, this book, I thought it might be interesting to try a box, and these are all made with, um, like a hard paper, not paper's not the right thing for the inside, maybe like a mat board. So they're not wood boxes. Hmm. They're made out of a hard cardboard. It goes through the process. But um, I thought it might be interesting to try to do a box. Can I flip through that? Yeah. So that, who knows what happens with that, but she showed that book and I'm like, click. I'm oh, it's like a bunch that. of flat folds. So it's like, together. I know, I'm like, I can do, a, if I can do a flat fold, I can do a box. Um, and I'll think I'll, so she does some stitching, but then that also the bag construction. So. Uh huh. Yeah, maybe so we'll have I, I think this is, really giving anything away but she's showing how to cover your your box with fabric cool so i have a pipe dream of making a box for each of the ggs for each of the granddaughters and just having a few little things in there that i collect over the years and then i don't know when they turn 21 or i die or something they'll get they'll get something, their box. Some, something, something some like of, that some of them they'll, they'll get their box from gramsing so that's that's an idea and then finally i wanted to share this um as a knitter there's a knit designer, her name is Kate Davies, and she lives in Scotland. And she designs beautiful, beautiful things. But she also, all of her books, she has little essays that she writes as well. So she's written a series of books. That's such interesting photography. Wow. And her husband is a photographer. So these, even if I don't knit, I almost get all of her books because even if I don't knit things from it, I, I love her essays and just looking at her designs. And in this book, she talks about, um, she learns how to do ankle weaving. And I just want to read a little blurb from her essay because it really struck me as something that's hitting me about cross stitch. And, and the little title of this um, segment is called Beginner's Mind. And she said, I was someone who for over a decade had specialized in designing and creating a particular kind of textile. She's a, she's a knitter. Um, and then she sound, said that I found that being a complete novice, and this is as she's learning to weave, 
meant that I had to focus very closely indeed on process and technique. I also discovered that having a beginner's mind meant thinking my way right back into the fundamental structure of what I was making. Um, and then she goes on from there. And I thought mm -hmm. um, that really resonated with me. I think one of the reasons I like learning new crafts and new things is, is that beginner's mind where you have to, there's so much to learn and you're so focusing on fundamentals and technique. And noticing everything, yeah. And noticing everything. So that, that um, resonated with me. So I, okay, crafters, let's stay curious and let's keep learning um, new things. And Definitely. it all comes back on itself, like things that you've learned from other crafts just work their way um, laying to the laying tool or how you fix color yeah uh, right. Right. i definitely enjoy the overlaps i think that's Is our time for some fun? thumbs up thumbs up yeah all right some things we're looking forward to over the yes yeah. okay summer. so we said three things that we're looking forward to this summer fresh sliced peaches <laughs> it's peach season here and i love peaches so my my individual instagram name is fresh sliced peaches and that came about because in my journal in the back of my journal i keep a just a list of all the things that just make me feel like mm. fresh Come sliced on. peaches is one of them a crescent moon a very mm. sharp ticonderoga pencil they're my they're mm. everyday things that really just make me so happy mm -hmm. um no, yeah, exactly. We <laughs> can share this later. So I'm looking forward to fresh sliced peaches. I'm having like two a day right now. Um, I'm look. I'm really ready for kind of a reset. I, I, I'm really looking forward to the weeks ahead to do some tidying and some decluttering and just sort of like a reset of physical things. Mm -hmm. And how do, how do you think you're going to do that? Do you think you'll do a little bit every day? Pick your, like one project a week. What do you think? I think I will. I will do a little bit every day, and then I'll have some bits and spurts of like really diving deeply into a few areas mm -hmm. that I know I would like to give some attention to. Mm -hmm. uh, one of which is I moved a lot of my school things home during Zoom time, and they haven't all <laughs> been brought back to school, and it's now it's starting to feel like we're done with that and this is mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like it feels like clutter in the house now mm -hmm. where before it was just I was so happy to have it at my fingertips mm -hmm. um, and then my third thing is just as I said with my shirt supplies just I want to do some garment sewing it's one of my favorite things to do and we have six little girls in our family and so maybe I'll sew some some things for the kids and mm -hmm. we'll see we'll see what happens that little romper is adorable I know I just That's adorable we <laughs> make me one, please. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> the next catwalk, Anna and Carolyn will We're be wearing their rompers. Sometimes I see little kids' clothes and I'm like, I'd like that outfit. If, I will, if, I, if it was socially appropriate to wear I it. will say I wore a jumpsuit to oh, SJ oh, by oh, the Bay. Oh, you know what, Anna? Um, do you mind? Let's insert a picture of you in your jumpsuit. Okay. She it was not exactly a romper, but it's close. She and I was just called to wear pants. I wanted to wear pants. rocked it. You Thank rocked you. it. That, we should have mentioned that before. It was awesome. And then anyway. she had this it was salt navy blue, and then she had these shoes that had the pattern on them. Was so they were like brocade, like a golden yellowy brocade. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. yeah. And then I changed into my Vans. Yeah. <laughs> for dancing. All right, you have Carolyn, your thing. Oh, that was your thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So things I'm looking forward to this summer is first of all, I'm just looking forward to iced tea. I love iced tea when it's hot, and I just drink. She does unsweetened, lots of ice, and I can kind of just kind of keep it going all day. Just add ice, so mm -hmm. I love that. So you can have your ice jingling and your jewelry jingling uh, on with, your my, with my with my bling, that all that. Um, I'm also really looking forward to um, traveling across the country, mm -hmm. and we're gonna. My husband and I have. A, a van, a conversion van. It, 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 what we did is we bought a Ram van, and it's a high one, so you can stand inside. And then there's a company in Oakland, California, that they fit them out. So we left our van with them, and they built out the inside. And I'll put in a couple of pictures here just to get a, a flavor for those. And you'll see, I, I might put my uh, forest in the van. The van, her name's Teensy. So if you she have might the, right, the right space, yeah. There's a right space for that.
Um, I'm really looking forward to, we're gonna um, go cross country this year. Last year we took a really long trip across country. This year we're gonna go pretty quickly because we're gonna spend about a month up in New York, in New England, visiting with my younger son's family, uh, getting to meet the, the um, yeah, the granddaughter who she's two months old now we'll get to meet her spend time with them and then we'll also do a few side trips we're going to go up to Maine and then we're going to go to the Finger Lakes um, and then spend some time at the beach and then we'll um, drive back so really really looking great. forward to that and then the last thing I'm just looking forward to is time uh, you know just during the school year I love my job I love what we do but you're you're so dictated by time you have to be here or do this you it's finish a very your, scheduled it's job. a very scheduled job you finish your day and you're like oh that was a good day I gotta get ready for tomorrow so I think just having time to be creative both um, with my crafts and I also have some ideas of some teaching things that I really want I need that time to think about some changes I'm going to be making um, just some time to play with the granddaughters so last um, couple of my son's family too, they, all four of them had COVID. So my poor husband was left out because I could go over there and sort of the five of us could have COVID together and I could help with the with the children and then my husband was like left here. So, but it was just nice just having time, Not like nothing on the agenda, like just whatever the two-year-old wants to do, we can just poke around and do that. And then also just like in that, that non-scheduled time, just really looking forward yeah. to that. All right. I, th I think that's a wrap again. I think so. Yeah. All right. So S and J by the bay again. What a great. Uh, there's just nothing better than a wedding. Uh, just yeah. And a family well, a family a ba wedding when a you baby is almost as good as a wedding. Yeah. I, I know we've had so many great toasts since we started Floss too. So I know. Special... We're gonna dry up pretty soon. Exactly. There things. might be a it might yeah. be a lull, but um, or maybe not. Who knows? Yeah. You never know. Okay. All right. All so right. Um, until next time, happy crafting. crafting. Stay, Stay curious. curious. Cheers. Bye. Welcome everybody. Uh, okay, let's turn it on.